the CAR T cell field is rapidly evolving. It has, however, a couple of hurdles still to be taken, especially when you think about making this technology available to larger patient populations. And one of the big hurdles is manufacturing. So currently, um, one manufacturing cycle, which has to be followed for each patient individually, takes something like 15 to 20 days from removing the T cells from the patient until they are ready to be um, transplanted back. That is a complex process, costly, time consuming, and therefore there's a lot of research efforts currently going on to make this easier. And um, in vivo CAR T cell generation is uh, one opportunity. However, probably that one that is most farthest in the future. Um, the more immediate ones are, for example, that there is activities ongoing to produce CAR T cells locally at the hospital side. Um, there are clinical trials ongoing. Then there is the approach of having um, CAR T cells produced in short time. There was a presentation from Novartis at the recent EBMT conference where they um, showed that they have a new uh, manufacturing process which only takes 48 hours, so pretty interesting, um, which would drastically reduce the uh, manufacturing time. However, still this is still an autologous individualized pro product, so manufacturing for each patient individually. And to get rid of that, there is the approach of allogenic CAR T cells. Um, which is currently in clinical trials, but looks that um, this is maybe also not that easy. It's still a cell-based product that has to be transplanted. And of course, the allogeneic approach, as the name says, is not autologous, therefore can have immunological problems. So in vivo CAR T cell generation would mean that you really produce the autologous CAR T cells um, in the patient by simply injecting the vector that delivers the car. And that means you convert this process now into a off-the-shelf product, so a single um, medicinal product that could be injected in each patient. Um, that is the attractive goal. Um, so far, we have um, proof of concept from a um, handful of laboratories, among these also uh, my lab, and we um, showed initially in 2018 that it's possible to make human CAR T cells by injecting a T cell targeted lentiviral vector into humanized mice. And these mice then, within a couple of days after vector injection, developed CAR T cells. And those uh, CAR T cells were fully active, eliminating tumor cells, and also as a CD19 CAR T cell does eliminating the B cells from these mice. There is now, interestingly, not only um, the lentiviral vectors, which we generated, which, um, by the way, have a really high target selectivity. That means they only deliver to T cells, but not to other off-target cells, which for this approach is an important safety issue. And there are now also uh, non-viral vector systems. And there was a recent publication and also a report at the EBMT on the use of lipid nanoparticles, which uh, we all know from the current vaccination campaign and the pandemics. So it's exactly these RNA lipid nanoparticles, which in this case are now uh, modified to deliver the car um, the car gene and um, in that setting it was used to not um, target tumors but to target fibroblasts in cardiac fibrosis and um, that's an approach where you um, only want to have CAR T cells for short term and therefore these authors use the mRNA approach in lipid nanoparticles where you have CAR expression for a couple of days then these uh, CAR T cells um, attack the fibrotic sites, but then um, they fade away because the RNA is not stable and um, the CAR expression declines again. So 
that's another example that in vivo CAR T cell generation in mouse models is possible. What is now needed is um, further preclinical work, especially in large animals. We have to see that from a mouse to a patient, we probably have something like a factor of 1,000. So is it possible in a large animal model to generate in vivo CAR T cells? That's an uh, important next step. And um, then we can see if this will be translated into clinics. And um, as I said, the promise is, of course, that then this will result in a universally applicable medicinal product.